I saw in this video, I will talk about a normally distributed random variable, and I will prove that a linear combination, so linear transformation of a normally distributed random variable, and by linear transformation, I mean A times X plus B, where X is a normal variable and A and B are constants. So the linear transformation is also normally distributed, which means a times mu plus b and variance a squared times sigma squared. So suppose we have a normally distributed random variable x. So x is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And we're interested in a distribution of a linear transformation of the variable x in the distribution of a times x plus b where a and b are just some constant. So for example, we could be interested in a distribution of 5 times x plus 6. So we know that x is normally distributed, and therefore we know how to derive its probability function. So we know that the probability of x being less than k equals to the integral from negative infinity to k of f of x over x, where f of x is the probability density function of x. And since x is normally distributed, we know what is this function. So for a normally distributed random variable, the probability density function f of x is 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma times e to the power of negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. So the probability that x is less than some number k is the integral from negative infinity to k of f of x over x. So this is our f of x, the probability density function. So now we need to compute this integral if we wanted to find uh, this probability of x less than k. But we're interested in a distribution of ax plus b. So we want to find what is the probability function for this new variable. Let's call it y. So we want to find what is in general probability that y is less than k. And we know that can be expressed as probability of a times x plus b less than k. Well, since we know probability of x less than k, we look at this expression and we want to separate x so that x will be on the left and everything else would be on the right. So let's first subtract b from both sides. So ax less than k minus b. That's the same thing, right? And now we have to get rid of a. So divide both sides by a. So we have probability of x less than k minus b over a. The probability of ax plus b less than k is equal to the probability of x less than k minus b over a. And since k minus b over a is just some constant, we know how to express that. So here we had x less than k, but k is just a number. We could set that equal to k minus b over alpha. And we know that equals to the integral from negative infinity to k minus b over alpha of f of x over x. So what we're doing is just we're summing up all the probabilities for all the x that is less than that uh, constant k minus b over a. So now we just have to compute this integral. So we are applying a variable transformation here. So let's set y equal to ax plus b because we're interested in a distribution of y. And we'll be transforming the variable x inside our integral here and we'll be expressing it in terms of y. So we need to express x in terms of y and also dx. Well, if y equals a times x plus b, then dy over dx, just take the first derivative, equals alpha, and then dy equals a times dx. And from that, we can find that dx equals dy over alpha. Because remember, we want to express x and dx in terms of y and dy. So we're transforming this integral, which is expressed in terms of x. We're summing over x here. We'll express it in terms of y, and we'll be summing over y. So if y equals ax plus b, 
then ax equals y minus b and x equals y minus b over a. So instead of x here, we substitute y minus b over a. That's what we have here. Um, u is a constant, so it stays the same. Um, 2 pi sigma, those are all constant, they stay the same. 2 times sigma squared are also constant, they stay the same. And remember, we need to express dx now in terms of dy. And since dy equals a times dx, we have dx equals dy over a. And that's what we have here. Instead of dx, we're writing 1 over a times dy. And also, we have to look at the limits of integration. So the lower limit is negative infinity. So suppose a and b are some positive constants. Um, in another video, I can just talk briefly about if they're negative. Uh, but it will be the same thing. So if x goes to negative infinity, y goes to a times negative infinity plus b, well, negative infinity multiplied by something is still negative infinity, so the lower limit of integration stays the same. And as x goes to k minus b over alpha, which is our upper limit of integration, but, well, y equals ax plus b, so y goes to a times k minus b over a plus b. So if x goes to k minus b over a, y goes to k, and that's why we have k here as the upper limit of integration. So here now we have transformed the integral in terms of the variable y. Okay, so Let's look at the integral here. We need to compute it, so we want to do some transformations. Let's first take out 1 over a outside of the brackets. So y minus b over a minus u squared equals to 1 over a. Here we have y minus b. Let's take out 1 over a here also, minus 1 over a. And we have to multiply that by a, so times a times u. That's all squared. And now let's take 1 over a outside the first bracket. So because it's squared, it'll have 1 over a squared. So that's equals to 1 over a squared. And we have a y minus b minus a times u squared. And that's what we have here. So that equals to uh yeah we have here e to the power of negative we can put here two times sigma squared and a squared goes here because we're dividing by a squared and here we have y minus and let's put that into brackets a u plus b squared so you can see what we're doing now right we're transforming this into the form uh, negative infinity to k f of y dy. We want to have the integral in that form so we can show that that is the uh, probability function, the cumulative density function. So we derive that probability of ax plus b, uh, this should be probability of ax plus b less than k equals to probability that y is less than k because we defined y equal to ax plus b. And in the previous slide, we just derived it equals to the integral from negative infinity to k of 1 over 2 pi times a times sigma. You can check from the previous slide. This is what how you can write it as. And to e times e to the power of negative y minus a mu plus b squared over 2a squared times sigma squared. Well, remember a normal variable suppose some variable x, if it's normally distributed, then its PGF is 1 over 2 pi times sigma times e to the power of negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Well, mu is just some number, so suppose this mu x equals a mu plus b, and this sigma x equals a times sigma, 
then the sigma squared equals a squared times sigma squared. So as you can see here, this is just y minus mu y, and this is just sigma y squared, and this is just sigma y. So mu y equals a mu plus b, sigma y equals a times sigma, and sigma y squared equals a squared times sigma squared. So the integral is just negative infinity to k, 1 over 2 pi. And here we have times mu y times e to the power of negative y minus, uh, this is uh, mu y squared over 2 sigma y squared dy. So we can see this is just our f of y. And this will be true for when uh, mu y is a times mu plus b and sigma y is a times sigma. So we just showed that y is distributed with mean y equals a mu plus b and uh, sigma y squared equals a squared times sigma squared. So we showed that ax plus b is also normally distributed uh, with mean a times mu plus b and variance a squared times sigma squared. And this is just some R code in which I look at the distribution of temperature in Celsius, a uh, temperature in southern Ontario in a given day in July. So this is temperature of many years. So this given day in different years, we'll look at that distribution in Celsius. And then we transform it. So if X is in Celsius, we apply transformation to convert it to Fahrenheit. So Y equals 1.8 times X plus 32. And then Y is the same temperature, but just in Fahrenheit. And you will see that X was normally distributed and Y is also normally distributed, just with a different mean and variance. So see, I mean, this is our temperature X in Celsius. And this is Y equals 1.8 times X plus 32. This is temperature in Fahrenheit. And you can see the distribution is just still a normal distribution. Just here we have a different mean. So if the mean here was, I think the mean was something like three. If X is, if mu X equals three, we have a um, mu y equals 1.8 times 3 plus 32. And the uh, variance of y equals 1.8 squared uh, times variance of x. I forgot what exactly I put for the variance. But yes, you can see the linear transformation is normally distributed. It's just shifted in the mean and the variance changes by factor of a squared. Uh, yeah, so that's the proof. Thanks for watching.